Well, it's the season 12 premiere of Face the Facts. I am Nick Face. Welcome back to our lovely audience here. Uh, this is our 12th year of Face the Facts. Um, I tell this every season when we begin our new shows that we do. When I age, I get younger. So just want to make that clear. Joining to me on my left today, Tom Smith. Welcome back. And Phil Healy. Hey. North Cam program coordinator down here. How's everything going, everybody? I good, age good. horribly. I think you <laughs> age well, gracefully. Really? Oh, that's nice. Yes. I'm 22 years old. Oh, that's what that's, I thought. Yeah, and you're 19? Uh, yeah. That's what yeah, I, and yeah. I'm 18, so just wanted to make sure go. that was clear. Um, in case you haven't seen my new shirt, I have a new shirt that I am showcasing today. This is uh, it's called, it's a shirt from Barstool Sports that they made. And it's um, a little slogan off of Jared Carabas. I don't know if any of you guys know of yeah, him. Yeah. He's the Red Sox corresponder, baseball reporter on um, for Barstool. It says, Da Yankees lose. And that's after David Ortiz. Uh, that's a David Ortiz phrase that was said when he was calling two years ago the postseason games on TBS. Him and A-Rod were paired together. Wow. So it's one of those little quotes and slogans. I, I saw the shirt and I had to get it. Which is based on... The Yankees announcer, the radio announcer, yes. who always says, you know. Yeah, the Yankees win. Is that, that one always? of those things. Yeah, but now yeah. this is the Yankees lose. We, so that, we like that better. That, yeah, of course. Yeah. What, I mean, as much as I hate uh, A-Rod as a uh, announcer for mm -hmm. baseball, I, that's one of the best pairings ever is Ortiz and A-Rod. I actually don't Just mind going him back that. That was a there. great po I And mean, I think we're going to be seeing that more when the Fox uh, covers the uh, baseball postseason run. Yeah. Um, it's a good pair. We'll get into the whole broadcasting thing, the baseball side of things, in a short while. But we want to talk first about the NFL. The New England Patriots kicked off their season on Sunday. It was against the Houston Texans. And the Patriots win. What a nice game that they had to start with, I must say, some doubt with, again, Tom Brady being 41. Receivers being banged up, not having that many. A lot of injuries. For some people, suspensions. Oh. So overall, just hearing your thoughts on what you saw from Sunday. It was an interesting game. Mm -hmm. There was, there were a lot of a lot of different things that were implemented into the offense that we have never seen before. I don't think in at least our generation of the Patriots, mm -hmm. um, running backs and fullbacks re being receivers, Gronk being the deep receive the deep threat. Mm -hmm. um, Philip Dorsett actually having a good game, mm -hmm. scoring a touchdown. And the de the thing that stood out the most to me was the defense and how decent of a job. Even letting did. up 20? Even letting up 20. It's, I mean, it, it's something that we're just going to have to get used to okay. for a little bit because the defense hasn't been that stellar in the past couple of years. Um, and as well the fact that we're missing our the best defensive coordinator in the league has probably ever seen in Matt Patricia. He might be um, looking for a job after last night, but that's another story we'll get into um, later on. Your your opinions, did you get a chance to see a little bit of the game? I actually did get a chance to watch the game. And last okay, season, I didn't, didn't get to watch many, but uh, yeah, there was some fun stuff they were pulling. Uh, Devlin, although he has received passes before, but it seemed like he was more built into the game plan, like you yeah. were saying. And uh, getting stuff out of the back. They were just throwing a lot of stuff out there. And it's sad to see Jeremy Hill down for the year. Yes, he uh, it was a torn ACL. I think it was a... Okay. Uh, or MCL. I think it was ACL. And okay. I think he's out for the year. And I don't Correct. know if anyone said anything about playoffs, but I don't know. Don't hold your breath. Well, no, it's the me. next man up mentality. Yeah. Granted, there doesn't seem like there's as much depth in past years that they've had. This could be a, as the season where we see a lot of James White. It could be oh, a season yeah. where we see a lot of Rex Burkhead. Hopefully he stays healthy. We've already seen a good amount of him. And, yeah. and hopefully Sonny Michelle, the draft pick that they had. Well, yeah. We need to see a little bit more of him. Well, when do you think? He might maybe a couple games they bring him in. And I, I think yeah, he might be right. a factor in this upcoming game, oh. this, this next week for week two. So that, that could be something that could help the team quite a bit. He had a good couple games last season when he was healthy and he was playing. And it's the, I think the, the key right now for the Patriots here is the health. It's yeah. keeping guys healthy. One of my big concerns that I saw from the game was how, 
how much they were going to Gronk. And it's showing, at least for me, that the reliability with Gronk, if they're going to look for him you know, and get those passes right across the middle of the field, he's not going to last a full season, guys. At so. least not he's the next not. three games anyway. At least the next three games anyway. No. I mean, there was way too many balls that th- Brady was throwing that were – you know, right down the middle of the field, and he's just getting his bell rung, yeah. you know, with getting down and from, from defense, from stopping him. That's a concern for me. I feel Gronk is healthy right now, but we've not seen Gronk stay healthy enough for the entire season. If Gronk goes down for any game right now, how do you guys feel? It all depends who they're playing, to be honest. Uh I think he, I share the same thing. If they keep throwing to him, keep him going. And also Chris Hogan. Chris yep. Hogan got a lot of things over the middle of the field mm-hmm. where he like people were draped over him. And luckily he didn't get too hurt. Mm-hmm. And, you know, back to the Jeremy Hill injury, he got, I think it was Devlin who kind of like, it was like friendly fire. His helmet hit him. And I've been seeing that a lot, like in replays of people getting hurt. Not just the Pats Houston game, but mm-hmm. like everywhere. It just seems like everyone's just flying all over the place. It's just... Sloppy-ish, I guess. Mm-hmm. Maybe that's what we'll see in the first couple games. I think we're going to see a lot more of Philip Dorsett after that game. Dorsett, Patterson. <laughs> Where was Hogan? He only had one catch. And that's because they're... But he was pro- a bit. That's, in my opinion, a problem. Because with Edelman out, now Hogan goes in as your number one receiver. He's not a one. He's a two, a, a great three... A pretty decent two, a terrible one. Terrible. Because he's just going to get covered, and he can't find the certain spot that he needs to on the field. He did get a good P.I. call doing a double move when they got him down the field or whatever. Okay. And I think in the mm-hmm. third. But, no, I mean, no. He's, but, that's, but Brady, his career, we forget the first, like, ten years of his career. Who did he have to throw to? And he threw to how many different? He threw to eight different people. He threw to a lot of different people. Um, like in this game. It was for like this eight. game, which I like. Well, that's, that's vintage Brady, though. It is. And, I mean, it is the first game of the season, and he didn't really play much in the preseason, so he's still getting to know his targets a little bit more, at least in a game sense, right. not in a practice sense. Um, so that, was, that made the game interesting. Seeing that was he was passing to a lot of guys. Um, didn't see a lot of the rushing. There wasn't there wasn't no, much, rushing much rushing in the game. No. Um, which could point to the weakness on the offense this season. Let's do an overview here on what we thought of Brady from the game. You know, this is forty one, age forty one season entering in for him. How'd he look? Looked like a forty one year old quarterback. <laughs> I thought he looked fine. <laughs> I think Brady looked didn't look his age at all in that game. Um, I thought he was on point. I thought the interception was kind of bad luck. I don't think that was really his fault. No, it was a tip pass that ended it was just up going behind White. So. Yeah, it was a good play by a good defense. And uh, maybe they don't see it. Houston might not seem like it right now. But, I mean, for and yeah, like you said, it's the first game of the season. And, not, I mean, you'd say that for everything because who knows where these teams will end up. I right. think people aren't talking enough right now about the Houston defense. The Patriots knocking off and getting, getting obviously, week one win, that, that's big because I feel that the defense for Houston is one of the best in the league. you got Clowney and you got Watt right there as, as your two big guys that are out there on that team. I just feel putting up 27 against Houston is a pretty good sign of things. Especially They're one the, of the better teams, I think, that there is in the league. Especially after the start to last season against Kansas City because right. Kansas City has a decent defense, too, if not better than Houston's, at mm-hmm. least last year anyway. Um, but Houston also lost an offensive lineman and a defensive lineman. In that, well, they did. I don't know yeah, if he – I forget if Covington came back, but – I don't know. Uh, uh, oh, yeah, I don't know. I remember he went down. Yeah, he went down early. I think then, he came back. Yeah, I think um, you're right. But, yeah, they lost, I think, a couple offensive linemen. But it was also good to see that our offensive line stepped up, too, because you didn't see a lot of J.J. Watt pressure. You didn't see a lot of um, – I forget the other two guys, but Nance and Romo brought it up. And Clowney. Yeah, Clowney. I didn't see a lot of them. 
Uh, you, towards the end, Watts got in there yeah. a bit, but I mean, it seemed like game was already like it didn't really seem competitive, to be honest. I think Watts got to get up to game speed again. I think he's missed mm. so much time. I think that he wasn't going maybe a hundred percent. Well, they he they said there. he what played eight plays right. during preseason. So oh wow, really? They want to ramp yeah. him up a little bit. Yeah. I think the main objective here is to get him healthy. They want to sure keep him healthy because he's sure another. He goes up. He's a He's their team, right? In my in my eyes, he's him their, and Clowney are their leader. team. He's their leader, and he's he's also kind of like Gronk, where if he goes, I mean, he's he gotten down, he's gotten injured a lot too. So there's if he goes down, there's a problem. They've done well without him, but yeah, it, without him, he's you know they're not the same. That defense isn't Houston. Yeah. We also have the coaching matchup. We had Belichick versus O'Brien. Bill O'Brien was the Patriots' offensive coordinator for a few seasons, so there's a little bit of um, familiarity between the two. I thought that Belichick completely outcoached Bill O'Brien. Bill O'Brien, I think, was searching for answers to figure out what Belichick's going to throw at him next. Did you get a chance to hear his um, post game, his Which interview? One? Uh, Bill O'Brien. Bill or? O'Brien. I heard part of the talking about it's not my fault. It's not, it's my, not yeah. my. It's not my um, fault with calling. Or it's not my job. It's, it's not my the, job. It's Thank the you. The NFL's job. Yeah, to, I'm not going to do their job. Pretty much like that what? looked pretty bad. Yeah, I mean, it's not a good thing. You could just say, you know what, we should have uh, should have called a timeout. I know you can't throw a red flag, but give them time to think about it. Right. You know, even if it is clearly a catch, give them time to think about it. Don't let them do what, you know, you were in that system and you knew what they're going to do. They're going to go Correct. rush to the line. and. I just look at it yeah. as, as he's the coach. He's the leader yeah. of his team. There are certain things that I think a coach has the right and uh, the, the right to do and the right to... Uh, go go to his team and make sure certain plays like that towards the end of the game kind of don't happen in a way. I think that it was probably one of those situations where O'Brien probably wished he never said what he did. Sure. One of those things. I yeah. mean, I think we've all been in those situations from before. So I think it's a learning experience, a, a learning lesson. Show we've had that, yeah. And we mm -hmm. certainly have. <laughs> yeah. we, that's why we don't. That's why we cut on a good amount of stuff we do. <laughs> no. Um, I, I think it's a good learning lesson for him in a way. I mean, I think this is his fourth season now as the Houston coach. Oh, wow, really? I think that it doesn't probably look good to ownership on what was said, but I think mm. a couple wins and getting the team kind of back into the picture here with some stuff changes a lot of objectives from people. My thought there. On that play, though, I, it, I mean, from what I saw, it looked like a catch. Did it? It looked like Gronk had control of the ball after his – Elbow hit the ground. I think just I, it was honestly, touched, but yeah. I think it was spur of the moment. I think that he was just frustrated with how his team lost and everything. Yeah, I mean, I'm not uh, one of those situations. Well, it was like that press conference we talked about earlier in the year with LeBron during the playoffs or something, where he was like, um, or no, it was the the coach of the Cavaliers saying that. Um, oh, Ty Taiwan. Yeah, yeah, that Ty LeBron is the team or something. I forget yeah, what it was, Taiwan. but it wasn't wrong. <laughs> yeah. No, no, it wasn't. Do we have any other um, any other que any other things that we saw from the Patriots Houston game? Anything that you questioned? Anything? Anything? What stood out to you the most? Is there anything that really got your got, got you real excited about maybe how the team looked and all? I liked what I saw against a defense like Houston's. Um, again, it was the first game of the season, so Houston's defense didn't look top notch mm -hmm. like they could be. Um, I think the Patriots were lucky to get Houston week one. Yeah, I do. I, if that I, was I, maybe week 10, 12, sums it up, yeah. I yeah. think that would have been a different story. Yeah. Well, they have Jacksonville coming up too, which is going to be well, a tough yes. matchup. I like Jacksonville. I, that, I yeah, still do. They're great. Yeah. They're great. And they yeah. played them pretty well, and they're going to be playing with a lot of fire, I'm sure, in Jacksonville. And it's going to be a real defense you're going to see. I mean, I don't know. Maybe it's just week Did two. the Patriots play no, Jacksonville this year? Uh, you mean last year? Or did they... I know they did last year. No, no they, they play, they play this week. This, this week. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This, is that this next week? week? That's, that's, yeah. Okay, yeah, then. Week, yeah. I, looking ahead. <laughs> that, no, yeah. That's it's... a good match. That's going to be a good game. And it's yeah. going to be something that the Patriots, there's two tough defenses back-to-back. -to -back. They're going to really have to figure out on this next test here what works, what doesn't work, mm. what they feel most comfortable with. My my opinion on what I saw from, from um, Sunday's game a little bit, I think we're really going to see a lot of James White on this team right now. I think that's one of the players that Brady feels most comfortable with. I think that's a player that he trusts a lot. And I think it's somebody that can be a game changer and make plays. 
we see it also with him having um, the captainship. He's one of the captains of the Patriots oh, this yeah. year, which I think, I think it's a little boost of morale probably for him hmm. that says, okay, you know, maybe last year wasn't so good for me. I think it was a down year for James White last oh, really? year. Yeah. I do. I think this year for him can put something on the map that will show a lot of fans and a lot of people that he's one of the better running backs. Well, in the he league. was kind of shouted by Deion Lewis last year. Yeah, too. he was. And Without every, Lewis there, and everybody thought Jeremy Hill was going to be the big running back this year. So now he's down for the season. I so. was one. I just you know, dropped I, him from uh, my fantasy team. Just <laughs> let you know. No, I thought Jacksonville this week. Are there any concerns that you have about it? <laughs> yeah. Okay. <laughs> Let's talk yeah. about it. The concerns start from, obviously, we know our defense, but are there any particular players that the Patriots need to watch out for? All of Jacksonville, <laughs> Jacksonville defense. Okay. Uh, did Jack, uh, I think Fournette might be – I don't know if he's out. I know he was, he was hurt. I don't think that they're going to have Fournette next week, oh, okay. which I think is good, or this week, depending yeah, on yeah, who yeah. in the show. Um, <laughs> yeah. I don't think they're going to have him. Did he get injured in this last game? This, yes, this last game yeah. he did. I think I'm most concerned with with Jalen Ramsey. Yeah. I think that's the player that I want to watch a, out for because he's, he's got, got a big a fire, mouth on man. him. He does, yeah. 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 And he's somebody that doesn't like the Patriots, as we know. Mm. Um, I'm still not scared of Blake Bortles, though. I'm just not. Yeah, we'll see what they throw at you. Who did, they, did they pick up anyone else for their receiving core? I forget. Uh, their receiving core. Doesn't it have Allen Robinson... I think, yeah, he's, yeah. So. he's one of them. I know Alan Kearns is gone. He's off to uh, New Orleans. Yes, that's right. Um, I, I just, I still Alan feel Hearn, that yeah. it's the defense that controls that team. Offensive, especially without Fournette, they don't scare me there. So I think the Patriots got a little lucky if Fournette's not playing this upcoming well, week. We'll see. Especially yeah. with Hightower being healthy. Yeah. yeah, that's another thing that we haven't talked about yet. That's a big play on defense right there. But again, he's got the Gronk syndrome on him. He's got to stay healthy. Yeah. You've got to play a full season. I don't know why so many of these players struggle to play a full season. Well, Granted, they, it's, it's a, it's yeah. a, it's a hard-hitting job. I get it. Every day. But you don't see a lot of players play an entire season anymore. It seems rare to me. Well, I also think like that might be us looking back on it with uh, kind of uh, what was it, uh, Rose... Uh, what's that term? Rose tinted glasses or whatever. Yes. Um, yes. Yeah, because I'm sure like a lot of them play hurt and do whatever. And I think mm -hmm. I mean as far as like all the crazy off season stories about Brady, Gronk, Edelman, and you know Belichick and everything. I mean, there's one little one about Hightower how, where he almost was traded. I don't yep. know if you heard that. Briefly. So wasn't Gronk. Yeah, exactly. Gronk was yeah. almost traded. But I mean, Gronk also almost retired too. That's, yep. Yeah, just to get some more money, and it worked. But Hightower was one. It's one of those guys who's like, okay, we need him to be healthy the whole year. Yeah, he. I, I feel like for him, I think he's the controller of the defense. Yeah. I think things run through him. If he's going to be the dominant presence, like he's been being, like he's being paid to do, yeah. and I think that that I think the Patriots have a really good shot at having a defense that will prove a lot of people wrong. We also this didn't year. hear a lot about the uh, McCourty twins either in the first game. No, you didn't. No. Uh, I will say that Jason McCourty has been a disappointment since he's been here. He's not been, I think, anything that the Patriots thought he was going to be. Yeah. But maybe he's somebody that takes a little bit of time to adapt to a new change and a new system. Was he, he wasn't playing cornerback this past he was no. game? No. Um, Devin McCourty, we all know the story yeah, on him. He's a, he's a great fantastic great athlete, team, fantastic yeah. player on the Patriots. I think it's unfair to shadow what Devin's like and compare him to, you know, well, the, it's like comparing apples too. to oranges. Yeah, they're two different players. They're two different too. players. Yeah. Yes, they look alike. Yes, they play somewhat of the same positions. Do you think they switch out like jerseys? Like, oh no, I'm Jason. I think like, they've oh, done that from before. Yeah. I mean, they look. They're, they're identical. Yeah, I mean, they, they, it's crazy. Oh, weird. Um, but I want to see more. I yeah, want to see sure. more to see what see what happens from that. Um, Anything else we want to say about the Patriots? Because I do want to talk about some other games that happened in the NFL this weekend. I, I'm good. You're good? <laughs> I, think, I, think, yeah, yeah. I think we're good. Right. I think we're good on that. Yeah. I want to talk first about the, uh, the Green Bay and the Chicago game. Oh, I right. feel it was, it's something that should be discussed because of what we saw from Aaron Rodgers. Looked like he went out with a season-ending injury. Comes back at the second half. And 
gets his team back and wins. Was he all roided up? Is that what happened? I don't know. <laughs> uh, did any of you see any of that NATO game? into his no, leg? I, was, I saw the replay All yesterday. I know is that they're still evaluating him to see if he's ready yeah. to come back for week two, but it seemed to me like well, he you, was fine. Yeah, how do you, what do you mean evaluate? Like, what was, is it because he's running on adrenaline slash whatever drugs they were putting him on? Could be. To get out there? Could well, be. Well, I mean, I don't it's, a, it's a one of those mystery put on him? I feel he's, he's still going to play. He's, yeah. he's a player like Brady that doesn't want to be taken out of a game. He wants yeah. to get. But I do have to tell you, I'm getting kind of sick and tired of, I don't know, some of the media and some fans that are out there just saying, oh, oh, the Packers are so good, they're going to win a Super Bowl. They're going to do this. Aaron Rodgers is better than Tom Brady. No, he's not. He's not. Even if he is, you still need Does a Does he have team. only one Super Bowl? Yeah, no, he should have gone to two Super Bowls at least. Exactly. I but, feel he chokes. Yeah, or his team. Not as much as Matt Ryan, but we'll get to that uh-huh. in a minute too. But I, I feel like he can't, like he's good. I feel he's a clutch player, but he's a clutch regular season player. Yeah. I haven't seen it in the postseason. I think he's performed as well as people would like him to in the I, playoffs. I would agree on he, that. He yes. kind of reminds me of a Tony Romo when it comes to the playoffs. Oh, that's ooh, a low blow. Ooh, ooh, that's know. a low blow. Right maybe there. not. Well, Tony Romo had some good and bad. You maybe know. not to like the lowest of low <laughs> Tony Romo. Sure, sure. But I'm going to compare I'm, him to this Peyton Manning. Uh, I think that's a fair comparison. The Rome, actually, and to be clear, I don't think Romo. We can crap on him all we want. Like, the, maybe he's had like two bad playoff games, and the first playoff game he had, I mean, he did botch. He botched a handle, and that was just the biggest thing. Like his yeah. actual play on the field wasn't horrible, mm-hmm. but he botched a handle, which you know they clearly would have won that game. And also, Romo versus the Packers in Green Bay, they almost won that. That was the fant- That was the famous like, Des Bryant is it a that, catch? Yeah. Is it not a catch? Yeah. And also, um, Aaron Rodgers had a great, um, had amazing run um, uh, a couple years back. What was it, 2014 or 15? When, uh, I think it was 14. It was 14, yeah. When uh, Seattle made it, when we beat Seattle in the Super Bowl. I was 14, Should have been yeah. Green Bay. Yep. Because as we all, like, that crazy performance in Dallas. Oh, no, wait. That was actually a year after he had that crazy performance in Dallas and lost to Atlanta. So that must have been 15. That was 15. But in 14, okay. he should have went too. So maybe, right. You know. And Atlanta, yeah. Well, Atlanta, so they what, were what is, overall, the what, what, what are your thoughts on Aaron Rodgers? What is he? He's a great quarterback. Okay. He's one of the great uh, ones of this generation. Doesn't stay healthy long yes. enough. His longevity is always in question. That's another mark you can have against him. Brady is one of those guys. Whether you can make the argument that it's Green Bay doesn't care about getting an offensive line, which is one of the Seems things... It. Yeah, which is the stupidest thing. If, the, if you're worried about this guy's concussion protocol or like him not being the body of a 75-year-old when he's like 29, <laughs> correct? Then well, yeah, beef him up. What the hell's going on? Beef, put some sumo wrestlers in front of him. I don't care. That's, that's I got a hot thing. take. I think I think if Aaron Rodgers was, you. was yeah. healthy, I think he'd be a top-tier quarterback. But I he hasn't been able to stay healthy, so I don't. Hot take. Mike McCarthy, the coach of Green Bay, is the, one of the most overrated coaches in the NFL. I don't think it's a hot take. I think that's 100% accurate. Okay. I, I, you don't need much to do with, like, Aaron Rodgers. Put him out there. I don't know how he continues to have his job. That, that's one of the ones that I, I can't figure out. Same with the Bengals with um, I guess. Marvin with, Lewis. Uh, Marvin Lewis. Let's talk about that opening Uh-oh. game Sorry, now. Atlanta Samuels. versus yeah. – that's a perfect Sorry. segue. It's perfect time All because right. that opening night Thursday game was – in my opinion, an embarrassment from how many flags, how long the game to took. It. They talk about the stupid pace of play in baseball constantly. Mm. You know, baseball's a dying sport and all. That game started at 8.20 on Thursday night and didn't end till 12.30 in the morning. Wow. And baseball has a pace of play problem. Are you kidding me? Actually, the Patriots game was pretty long, too. It was long. It actually was longer. It went into, like, 4.30, which usually it's, like, 4 o'clock. Yeah. It? I'm yeah. sorry. I'm sensitive about it. But you know what? No, when you, you see garbage products that are put out in the field that are like that, that's horrible. Matt Ryan, I feel like Atlanta, when they hit their Super Bowl, are not going anywhere near a Super Bowl the rest of his career. Because he just can't hack he it. He can't. Or? He just doesn't have it. And it's, I'm so I like Matt Ryan. I think he's a quality person. I think he's somebody that does a great job. 
and I think he's a good leader and all. To be but fair, he can't we don't deliver. Know if he's a quality person. He might be like the Cincinnati Bengals owner. He, he could might be. be involved. He could in be. Right. And he was a BC <laughs> guy. So he does <laughs> New England ties and New no, England he does, roots. Yeah. I do have to say, with full confidence, from watching that ending of that game from Thursday with the Eagles, that if Tom Brady were the quarterback for Atlanta in those last 20 seconds in that game, Atlanta wins. So, well, yeah, what was the situation there? Matt Ryan had about six chances to win the game with 30 seconds to go. That doesn't and he couldn't me. complete a pass to save his life. Uh, well, he, he kept getting sacked. He kept getting hit. He looked scared. He looked like he had no business being on a football field. Well, Atlanta Jones just defense. doesn't get touchdowns, if you notice it. He catches big passes, yeah, yeah. but he doesn't go, score touchdowns. Like, look at the game from Thursday. Yeah. He had great yardage. He had, he had at least 100-something yards. I think it was like 173, as a matter of fact. Oh, wow. And he can't find the end zone. That's dictated from your quarterback. Well, it's also well, like it's that in the, def- field. the defense yeah. double teams him all the time. If not triple teams him because right, they know he he's gonna yeah. get he's gonna be targeted. And it's unfortunate because looking at Atlanta, it seems like they got talent. They got Devontae Freeman, mm. they have Julio Jones, they have Sanu who's a good two. And you Cooper, know. right? Um, one of their other Coleman, Tevin Coleman. Tevin mm-hmm. Coleman. Tevin Coleman. Who, is Cooper Austin Cooper is that their uh, tight, tight end? end I think? Yes, I think it he's is. Not bad. I mean they, no, yeah, he's not they bad. have a lot of good I think they have the tools there. I don't think Atlanta's problem is their coaching. I will tell you that. Yeah. I think a lot of it's just a couple of their guys just don't know how to win. Sometimes it's hard. I mean, yeah, we've seen it with even this current Red Sox group, which is a great transition when we get into there, but yeah. we're not quite there yet. They haven't won. They don't know how to win when the playoffs or the big games are on the line. That's a hard skill to learn. It's a different game in the playoffs. And some players, in my, in my opinion, don't understand the extra steps or the extra special things that have to happen to win those games. What do you think? You're either born a winner or you're born a loser, in my opinion. Really? And I, I'm a winner. I, I'm saying. I, I, I mean, I don't know. We, we'll, we could talk about that when we get to baseball. But, <laughs> I, I mean, I think, <clears throat> I think Matt Ryan just doesn't know how to use his targets anymore. Um, I think an interesting way of looking at I it. think he steps back in the pocket and expects to throw to Julio Jones and then he waits way too long and to wait for him to get open and he doesn't get open because he's double teamed mm-hmm. and the offensive line just isn't good enough to protect him. Is Matt Ryan an elite quarterback in the NFL? What do you think, Phil? Well, I would say define elite and then I would elite, say Elite is he in the Brady and Rodgers category? I'd say he'd be a tier below. Okay. He's not a bad. He's by no means or series of I think if a you, bad quarterback. I think if you give him targets and a strong offensive line, I think he could be an elite quarterback. I will say he's not. He's not an elite. I think he's in a tier below them. I may, I want to say he's like in the same. So you only have, but you only Matt have two Ryan. people in the elete category. Well, I think Drew Brees awesome. could be in there. Yeah. Um, who also does he? There aren't have, a lot of other options that you could put in there, really. I, I think you have your, your, your top three: Brady, Rodgers, and Breeze. Then tier two, you have the Staffords and Russell Wilson and I Cam would, Newton. I would put Wilson above Stafford, and I, I would Wil- too. I think Wilson is a proven winner, and I also think he's actually pretty pretty good, despite maybe his his own team not liking him. And then you have a question. That's very true. You also have guys that you still have question marks about. All the hype. I have to add, this is my, our last point we're going to mention with the NFL before we um, transition into baseball. We've got a lot to talk about that. Why were so many people so high on Jimmy Garoppolo? You have his hat on right now. Obviously, you like him. Can someone explain to me what he's done to say that he's a star quarterback in the NFL? What has he done? Um... One. I'll have you, if you want to think about the same. No, thing, I mean too. I, the thing you're probably thinking right off the bat: six wins in a <laughs> row. Wins, yeah. That's pretty good. Like it's not. It's not like he did. Oh, I just won like six games mm-hmm. in a row. No, he won his first six games. Okay. What do you think? Are you going to base it on that? I'm. Um, yeah. I, I mean, he didn't have. I mean, his two wins in San Francisco last season were fairly lucky. They they got lucky with who they played and how they won the games. Um, 
obviously he wasn't a big key in those in a big factor in those two wins Correct. um it was more special teams uh but he did throw a touchdown in his first game uh his first opener of a season mm-hmm did you yeah. notice anything? Just uh, the six wins? No, I mean, okay. I think he comes from a... He, I think we all know locally why people here are high on him. Right. Because he comes from the system, and Belichick clearly thought he was the successor. Correct. And I think, yeah, I think he's pretty good, despite this last game, which, yeah, he had a bad game against the Vikings. One of the best the, defenses. The Vikings. <laughs> yeah, like a good team. Like, and in Minnesota. And actually, it was close at one point. It was like 24-16, to 16, right? Is that what the game was? Yep, 24-16. So, so it's not like they... So he lost by a score. And he threw in three intercessions, which were probably key in to yeah. that, too. I do want to say, though, I am a fan of Garoppolo. I don't want you guys to think that, oh, no, no, oh I, well, I don't. Well, I, I'm I just looking for a debate here. That little, I'm asking, there's that middle ground, why dude. so high? Yeah. Why was there even any question, even with Brady's age and all, why was there such commotion about, oh, well, Brady's 40, 39, 38. He needs to be replaced. Garoppolo's the, you know, the heir apparent here. I think just based on humanity's experience with time. Okay. I, think I don't think anybody... Did you get a chance to watch the, um, the end part of that Tom vs. Time thing no. last week? No, and I understand like he's a crazy human being who... He is who is extending his shelf life sure. successfully. But even him, like, and from I haven't watched any of the Tom uh, versus Time. Mm-hmm. And Time wins, by the way, just as to let people, <laughs> let the people know the spoiler, Time wins. But he's doing a pretty fantastic job doing it. And I'm sure, like, everything's aching uh, mentally and physically. Sure. So, I mean, yeah. I, yeah, don't, I, don't, I don't think know. a lot of people expected... Brady to do as well as he has been doing at his age. Um, and that started back when he was like 38 because he didn't yeah. really start implementing the program until around that when he was like 38, 39. I'm like from the same breed from Tom Brady, not obviously the wonderful specimen that he is, but <laughs> it's the mentality of people that doubt you. That, that doubt for me, I just look back over the years and all the different things. Oh, you can't go make the baseball team or you're not going to be able to run a successful business or whatever. I flourish on that in a way. And I know some people, when they hear certain things like that, they crawl and hide and go under the covers. Me, I go out there and I prove that you can do it by working hard, by showing up to do the little things the right way. Those examples right there, I think that's, Unlike a lot of people. Sure, and I go out there and I prove people right. Yeah. Like, go I don't out and go, prove I don't go somebody right and do something Well, no, right. I, don't, I don't go under the covers. I go, you know what, I'm going to do it. And then when yeah. I do it wrong, and they're like, no, I was like, you're right. I was bad at this. Yeah. That was pretty horrible. Yeah, you admit your mistakes. Oh, no, but you, also, what, you, listen, the judge ruled in favor of the other person that hit and run, so I was fine. Yeah. I was exempt yeah. from everything, despite me being drunk. No, yeah. um, no, that didn't happen. Not unless. I was too drunk to know. <laughs> no, Def, no. Now we're rated R here no, today, no, no. folks. I mean, you got to no, get no, your no, no, but I understand what you're parental saying. Parental consent needed. So your your basic uh, the basic storyline here is Brady is uh, Brady has the will to win, unlike any other athlete out there right now. Brady right. Brady is a, just in his own category. You, I mean, you can't really even categorize I, I would say any that. other I would say that, any yeah. other football player or any other player in all professional sports in his category do you feel that that's one of the reasons why brady's been so good throughout his career is that proving people wrong mentality in feeling like oh i was the what was he the 199th pick 98th whatever he was of the 2000 draft people didn't think he was going to be a star and look what's turned into the greatest quarterback who's ever played i feel like he has more of a competitive edge than any of the other players hates to lose Hates yep. you, hates and it. you see it on his face. They always pan over to him whenever something bad happens, or mm-hmm. he's screaming at a teammate on the bench. And that's not his fault. It's just the way sometimes people are. People tick. Yeah, I mean, I don't. And that tick that he has, how are you going to take that away and discount him from all the success he's had in his career? And what do you, what does he owe us now? And that's the other nothing. question. Yeah. Nothing. Yeah. Nothing. He owes us nothing. Nothing. He's from he, what he's given. He can walk into the sunset right now. Put his feet up on the couch, hang with Giselle and his family, and say, 
I'm the greatest quarterback that's ever played in the NFL. He loves playing football. He and loves he the does, game. And he does mm-hmm. not want to. I don't think he wants to retire until if, he no, has to. If they make him a hover chair and they just make him yeah. some sort of like bionic <laughs> He'll get out on the field with that, that, the, the little rascal <laughs> scooter there. Yeah, yeah. Hey, Brunk, I'm open down here. <laughs> I mean, if they allow it. They might. Um, I mean, no one how crazy the commissioner still, is in this league. You still can't tackle the wheel in that case. Um, but I don't want you guys to think that I'm not a Garoppolo fan. I want to yeah. see more. I don't want people going out there saying he's the next Tom Brady. Are you kidding me? He isn't. No he one, hasn't even played a full season in the NFL, folks. No, but people no do one, that stuff all the time. No one I is, the, no one is drives, the next Tom Brady. Yeah. Those are the things that drive me insane. Speaking of insane, one of the things that's driving me absolutely bonkers right now is the bullpen down at 4 Jersey Street at Fenway mm-hmm. Park. This Red Sox I mean, team how much you love is it? so <laughs> talented. Their <laughs> offense is amazing. Starting pitching, pretty good. Defense is pretty good. Bullpen, a dumpster fire. Yeah. How is this team going to win in the playoffs with nobody in your bullpen that you feel safe and confident with winning? How are they going to do it? You put Erod in there. You put, uh, what's his name, your knuckleballer, who actually... Right. Okay. Yeah, who actually didn't he pitch this weekend briefly on he Sunday? He did. He did. He pitched he did on really Sunday, well. and I like that. And yes. I, I think he put right and uh, and yeah, it is a dumpster fire this bullpen, and it's <clears throat> both great and horrible to watch because it's just like, how can it be so beautiful? It's so sad and disappointing. I Looks can't great believe. on paper. I Looks can't outstanding believe. on paper. Joe Kelly is. Well. Then, <laughs> yeah. I can't I believe we're a couple weeks away from the Red Sox season being done. They are going to go and probably set the record for the most wins they've had in their franchise history. Yeah, what, 103? I think it was 103, I believe. No, I think it was 106 Mm -hmm. in like 1918 or something like that. Well, we actually have to... And they're at 98 now, right? We have to curse. They're They're at at 99 wins right now. Well, we have to make sure they don't win the next two games. Because Norcam Jason is going to be at the, the game on Friday, and he wants to see the 100 If wins. they lose the next two games, I am going to flip out. I'm just <laughs> saying is... that right now. It's Toronto. <laughs> yeah. If they lose against Toronto, I am going to lose my mind. Well, just put the ball boys out there. They might. <laughs> um, give everyone just, a night off. Just put, I'll take just, a deep breath for a moment. Put in the players first. that... Just put in the players that they put in that 7 Let's one, talk about uh, the good. Come back on yeah. Yeah. Let's talk the about the good oh, well. of what we've seen so far this season. And there is a lot. There is a lot. <laughs> there so is. much. There is. There's an MVP race we've got to talk about. Maybe a triple crown winner on this yeah. team. Let's look at the whole team and break down the season of what we've seen so far. What are your thoughts on what you've seen? Do you like what you see? I love what I see, okay. especially since it didn't look too bright when we were first talking about them at the beginning of the season. Um, but I, I, everything is going their way. Everything is dandy at Fenway, unless they're playing. Unless they're playing a playoff you are contention about to crack, team. My good man, you're about, oh, to, yeah. get, you're about to go. Um, and you're going to get him started. No, probably. probably. <laughs> <laughs> no, but no, Tom's right on. Like North Reading PD, uh, ambulance, get yeah. ready. <laughs> no, uh, to build on Tom's point, I actually would disagree slightly about the beginning of the year. Remember, they went on that crazy, they were like, what was it? Oh, yeah, the 18, three? yeah. Or 18 3, yeah, something like yeah, that. Yeah, to start, the, I forgot about that. That's but right. they, did level, they did level off. Like, they did level off. Did they, though? I, I guess that's a good point. I mean, they didn't I don't have. Think a, they really did. Well, I mean, they didn't lose three games, and I mean, they lost more than three games the uh, subsequent. Their worst months. stretch. I think has been the last three they or four got weeks. Swept. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Which, you know, whether you say they're taking their foot off the gas or they're just kind of hitting competition. I think yeah. I think uh, Cora is a little um, trying to rest players more often now. Now mm-hmm. that the season's coming to an end, um, it's kind of in hand. Do yeah. you agree with that? Yes and no. Okay. Yes, because you don't want to play players too much where to the point where they're too tired to go in the playoffs. No, because if you rest them too much, then they might lose their game and they mm-hmm. might not play as well as you would want them to. Um, I remember that we didn't really like too much what we saw from Cora's managerial uh, standpoint at the beginning of the season. Um, for me personally, I think it's worked – in a beneficial way mm-hmm. for them. Um, 
That's kind and of sad for me to agree with because I like Cora. I think he's done an amazing job taking over for the buffoon that was there for the past four, John Farrell. <laughs> Who didn't get a job, right? He didn't officially... He didn't deserve a job. Well, no, I mean, <laughs> well, so, I mean, he didn't officially get a uh, no. land. No, um, he's doing something with the Cincinnati Reds as like a pitching oh, okay. uh, analysis. Doesn't his son pitch there? Oh. Uh, his son pitches, I think, for the Pirates, I think. Um, but I, I like what, do you like what you've seen from Cora? Yeah, I think he's done a great job. He manages and the players well. Or? I think that's the big thing that you hit there is the managing of the players in there. You had a lot of characters in there. Now, starting the season off, I think your biggest character and personality you had to deal with was Hanley Ramirez. Oh. <laughs> I forgot all about that guy. Who actually? Uh, I did too, and I'm no, kind really. of surprised I'm bringing this him no, back I up. No, I thought you were going to say David Price. Uh, to be I think honest. that's Alex Cora's best move of the season is going to management and saying, "Get this guy off my team." You know what? Yeah, that actually that kind of blew my mind a little. I did not think about that. He literally well, was out of my head. That's been one of the best things that's happened to this team. Remember, we we thought we it happened in, while we were in the middle of filming the show. It did. Yeah, yeah. that's right. It I did happen. That. That's yes. right. Weird. I go breaking news: Red Sox release Hanley. I think our we have to pick our jaws up yeah. from the ground. <laughs> And but also a part of it too, as as we recall, is also a salary to get rid of salary or not uh, absorb as much they salary. They right? had to absorb, I think, like they had another. No, what they, it was is it's a vesting option. Yeah. By getting rid of him now, they got, they rid, got of, rid of his vesting option of nineteen yeah, million dollars for wow. next year. Because oh, wow. he had to reach a certain amount of at bats uh, but, uh, too. Yeah. yeah. That was part of it, I'm sure. And then they go and uh, pick up Steve Pierce Steve before Pierce the trade and deadline. Ann Kinsler. And, Ann Kinsler. And, uh, not, a, not an arm, but. The legend of Brandon Phillips they go and get. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> that guy, out of nowhere. They've had so many great games this year that it's hard to pick one that really is like the defining game of the I'm season. Still really I, I like that I game really last Wednesday with Brandon Phillips. I mean, mm. that, that, was, that was. They were losing. That was 7-1 yeah, last that was, Wednesday afternoon. That was a afternoon. group of Misfits lineup. Yeah. Starting pitching has been very pleasantly been a, a surprise. Chris Sale returns uh, this week to the Red Sox, which would be good. Only to pitch a couple of innings, right? Or Just 40? a couple to build yeah. them up. Um, the player that, that I have been on time. his case, <laughs> yeah. and I think many fans have been on this guy's case for ever since he's been a Red Sox, David Price is having an excellent season. Excellent. Well, after bullpen. that Fortnite fiasco. <laughs> yeah. Which, you know, maybe he just keeps it down a couple hours a night. Yeah. Uh, but, yeah, that Houston game, one hit. Or, no, two hits he let out. Yeah. And, yeah, the bullpen really... Uh, Coughed it up for yeah, him because he deserved really better. He deserved no, he did. better. And he that's really one of the did. things that was very disappointing about that and yep. downright depressing. Like, that was a game he thoroughly... 101 pitches. Yep. Pitch great. Yeah. Hasn't complained... Telling fans, you know, this is the player that I am. This is what I'm going to yeah. do. I'm here to win a championship. Saying all the right things, finally. Mm. About time. About time, correct. Um, now, talking about the MVP race, I really think it's between two players. It's Mookie Betts and J.D. Martinez. Which is insane. It is insane. When's the last time we've had uh, Manny Ramirez and David Ortiz, maybe? It might be similar. That was the 04. 04, 05. Yeah. Right in that, right in that, um, right in that uh, those years of contention yeah. from stuff. The question is, who do you pick? What do you do? Do you have a particular favorite? Uh, I'd like to see Mookie since he was robbed of it last year. Okay. Um, oh, who are we Trout? agreeing Trout here yeah. that I think Mookie it's is. a two-person race? Oh, yeah, or maybe absolutely. a three-person. Maybe Jose Ramirez from the Indians needs oh, to be involved. Yeah, no. And I, Chris Davis from the um, and Bre- Athletics. And Bregman, maybe. Just Bregman, yeah. From Mike Trout, I think, I think he's dropped down a lot because the... Well, the, the Angels injury. just aren't in contention. Yeah. And he got hurt. And he got hurt, yeah. yeah. So that slowed him down a little bit. No, yeah, I, th- I mean, from what you're reading, I agree with Tom here. I mean, uh, to your two-person uh, two race thing, yeah, I think that's it's there. And I, I think you give it to Mookie because he's out there in the field. I mean, Martinez will be out there. A little bit. It once in a while, yeah. And he's not bad, not bad at first. Um and also, they put him out in the outfield, right? Or is he usually outfield, or is he first? JD is usually DH. DH. Yeah, Sometimes he DH, plays yeah. right or left. Right or left. Oh, all right. Yeah. He's never played yeah. first. No. Who am no. I thinking he's played? Well, no. <laughs> he's know. thinking of Steve Pierce. Oh, okay. Yeah. He's been um, Fast drop off. But no, I, I, Mookie I, is my pick. I, I do agree. Yeah. Right now, 
my choice is Mookie. Who do I want to get the MVP? It's J.D. Martinez. Really? And here's why. Mookie has had an amazing season. In a way, I'd kind of give it co-MVP. Maybe that's what they'll do to keep it fair. Because removing both of those players from the Red Sox, they, they aren't anywhere close to, to being the team they are right oh. now. Mookie's big, big, uh, big qualities that he brings to the table is obviously his, his speed on the bases, his glove. He's a gold glove outfielder, center or right field. He hits for batting average, for power, fantastically. He's leading off games, doing that stuff well. He's a great clubhouse presence. What is the main difference between the Red Sox of last year versus this year? J.D. Martinez. Why he's, is that? <clears throat> because he's A, a veteran. B, players uh, like to go to him and ask for advice and see what they could do better. I mean, that's... That's what we've seen in Mookie is his that's his improvement this year is he's become a better player because of seeing what he asking Martinez what he could do. The better. Red Sox have become a better team because of and I don't like to use that one person or that I in a team because of JD Martinez. He has such an amazing learning presence that he carries himself about in the game of baseball. He breaks down his swings, he knows what's gonna be happening, he Tell certain players, you know, maybe you need to do something else. He's almost, in a way, their hitting coach. His skills that he's able to pick up and kind of know how to hit the ball the right way or to go with a pitch or to make an adjustment that's necessary has translated over to other players to make them better. Look at the production you've gotten from one player that I think really needed someone to kind of chirp in their ear a little bit for this upcoming year is Xander Bogarts. Bogarts is going to have 100 RBIs, going to bat like 285, 290, maybe 300. He's going to have about 25 home runs in the season. That's huge. You didn't get that from him. You also have Kinsler, who was struggling with the Angels to start the season. Since he's been a Red Sox, Kinsler's hitting about 350. In that lineup, I mean, I could hit 350, maybe. Who knows? But The adjustments that you've seen even from Blake Swihart in the past month or so with going to Martinez and saying, you know what, what's wrong with my swing? How can I make it better? In a way, J.D. is a player coach on this team. Mm -hmm. And he also brings his own, like, his own, like, posse with him, doesn't he? He like, does. Like his own, like, batting team. J.D. Martinez, right now, if someone was to ask me who was one of the best signings that the Red Sox have ever had in history, I would say Manny Ramirez from being a free agent. Free agent signings, I yeah. want to say. I would say... Manny Ramirez and J.D. Martinez are my one-two right now as a team. J.D. Martinez has had that much of an impact on this season, and that's why I give it a co-MVP, Mookie and J.D. Well, he has such a good relationship with all the players. Like, look at the relationship he and Holt have developed. I, I am such a fan of what J.D. Martinez has brought to this team. He, he is my favorite player on the Red Sox now. He yeah. absolutely is. And, I, you know, I love Mookie and everything, but... Without J.D. being there, Mookie isn't having the MVP season in my eyes without him there. No. Just my thought. And that could be the same David Ortiz, Mookie thing from yep. two years ago. Exactly. Could but very also, well be. To back to Xander Bogarts, his defense has been amazing. Please don't discount Xander Bogarts, folks. I mean, his oh. season he's having right now is just, he's the underdog. He's the unsung hero of this Red Sox team. Can't really discount many of his the offensive players. His batting average with two outs and runners in scoring position, everything. Yeah. He's hitting like 375. That's awesome. Yeah. He's been clutch. He's delivering. I just want to see it more and see him be more consistent. He's showing that she's showing the league that he's such a superstar, and that's great to see. Now we've been positive. I need to talk about the problems that are happening. The pitching in the bullpen is my biggest problem right now with this team going far. The Astros series. Did you get a chance to see any of it this weekend? I watched. It's oh. a preview of what's coming, yeah. I have to say. It's between Houston, the Indians, um, the Athletics, the Yankees. That's probably all those teams are going to be going yeah. to the playoffs. You don't think Seattle's going to make it? Oh, yeah. Seattle's kind of in the mix, too, right? I don't think Double Seattle's going to get it. I don't. Last I saw, Oakland was three and a half. I don't. I think the two wild cards. Two wild cards um, oh, yeah, the Yanks pretty much have the wild card. The Yankees pretty much have the wild okay. card. Okay. Seattle may get the, the, the last one. Who knows? 
I don't know who else would, would, would really be in, in contention there it's with. It's really Seattle and Oakland. Yep. So. And do they play each other? I imagine they play each other. Well, the Yankees just yeah. played out there a little bit, so mm -hmm. hopefully oh, they, they can beat the each ways. other up a little yeah. bit. Well, yeah. The Red Sox have to identify who they're going to have as their middle relievers. The middle relief right now for the Red Sox is pathetic. And it's sad because Dombrowski, the general manager and vice president of baseball, uh, decided at the deadline that his bullpen was good enough and he didn't need any other arms. Boy, does he look bad right now because I don't know. I don't trust anybody right now, and I don't even trust Craig Kimball right now. I never have, really. I don't. No. I don't trust the soul in that bullpen. I do like Stephen Wright. I liked what great. they did on for, on Sunday night with putting Wright in there for two innings. It was the right move. It was the right move. The problem I have with it is it's a knuckleballer. It's a They're inconsistent. You don't know what to expect. Oh, true, and yeah. catching-wise, pass balls and all with stolen bases gets a little dicey. Yeah. That's my concern with that. Now, when you get to the playoffs, you really only need three men in the rotation. So that's probably Sale. Two in the first round. Ri yeah. I mean, well, you yeah. do need you, you do need, need three. yeah you do need three. But so you go Sale, Price, and Porcello. Rodriguez. I would say or Porcillo. I go Porcillo. Porcillo throw Rodriguez in the bullpen. Yeah. Okay, so Rodriguez goes to your bullpen. The problem is figuring out if Rodriguez is good to be in the bullpen, which I think he should be. And then you also have Evaldi, who is the 98-mile-an-hour yeah. guy, but he's no, been no, inconsistent. Dude. That might help. I want to see what that is there a little bit. Right now, in the next two weeks, the Red Sox have a lot of questions to answer. Who is going to be the guy or the guys that are going to get the job done? Because right now, Matt Barnes, see you later. Joe Kelly, see you later. Yeah. Keith Hembry, you pitch another game for the Red Sox, I'm coming after you. See you later. Uh, Another, Ryan another Brazier. On Twitter. Goodbye. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, who, like, is, there, is the expanded roster, was that September 1st? That already happened? Did they bring anyone up from Triple A besides any pitching? Didn't they have some other They pitching? have Bobby Pointer, who's come up, who's yeah. been decent. They have Brandon Workman out there, oh, who Workman, I like. Yeah. He's not bad. He's not bad. I've always liked Workman. Yeah. I think they need to see more of him. But the guys that have been doing the season here, like Hembry and Hembry. Kelly and Barnes, enough! <laughs> I can't stand it anymore. Uh, they don't have any. All, the whole season, I will say this, another great thing Cora has done. He's managed to hide the crazy glaring flaw that has been there kind of uh, at best so-so. Minus weekend. this weekend, yes. No, actually, they had a pretty good, yeah, minus this weekend. Friday and Saturday and even Sunday, that they were exposed like you can't believe. Sure, because Houston's, a, you know, they're uh, talented and uh, they're very patient. And, like, Gonzalez is one of those guys who, you know, doesn't get a lot of press, I, I feel, nationally. But he's the guy who hits all the time. Like, he, I don't see Here's that guy my thing. miss. Houston, Even to me, after out, this weekend, base. Or base runners or looks like the favorite to me to repeat. Yeah. They look the favorite to me. They're not afraid of anybody. No. No. And the Red Sox are going to have a tough time in a series beating them. They got so much depth. Their pitchings and their bullpens better. Sip is... Crazy. He's got some yep. nasty stuff, man. I and remember, they got out. Osuna out there, who, as much as I don't like his personal lifestyle choices on what he's done, is getting the job done. Yeah. Which is kind of unfortunate. You kind of wish karma yeah, comes but back he's, at you. But, he's yeah. been known to choke against the Red Sox, too. So. Didn't he Red choke Sox, if he's, he's actually done well against them, sadly. Mm -hmm. they got to figure him out. Also, I think it'll be, this team, I think, will battle. How confident are you now after this more. series this weekend against Houston? Are you with the Red Sox in the postseason? I think the last game helped. Yeah, and I also think the first game helped, too, because it showed yep. that Price could pitch them. And yep. if, you, if you had thrown someone who had a little bit more of a... Maybe a, Stephen Wright. If you threw Wright Friday. or Erod or even uh, Caliban or... Uh, Thornburg? Thornburg. Oh, I don't know about Thornburg. Who's the other starting pitcher? Uh, starting pitcher. Avaldi. Velasquez. Okay. Yeah. Avaldi. Yeah. And I think it just made up a pitcher. Could have been a different story. What yeah. are you? What are your thoughts? I think the win on Sunday helped. Okay. Um, I think the playoffs is a whole different atmosphere it's from a the whole regular different ball regular game. season. Yeah, it just is. It's but a do you whole think they treated it the same though? You think they kind of both teams treated it like a kind of I, I, I definitely I do. think I think they yeah. did. I think more so the Astros and the Red Sox though. Really? Yeah. 
Well, I mean, the Astros came the in. Because the Red Sox came, too many players. The, the yeah. Astros came into Fenway. I, again, yeah. the playoffs are a whole different atmosphere. I don't think players are going to get rested as much as they have been during the regular season. At least, I hope that's the case. I hope Cora is thinking that way. Um, I think that having the right lineup and being in the right situation, the right field, the right location, um, I think it could be a whole different story. Mm -hmm. I think I think the Red Sox could definitely beat Houston. Um, I wouldn't hold you to that. It, the series will probably go seven games, yeah. um, but the Red Sox definitely have fight in them. Red Sox got to get out of the first round here. Remember. So who could they fight? Like, who's... The Red Sox haven't had anybody in their pitching staff have a win on their career in the postseason. Did, no, Porcello didn't win one. Doug Fister won last year. Oh. Yeah, well. That's not bring good. Bring them back. They don't have experience, and they have to get that. But they also didn't have the lineup that they have. They have a whole different lineup this year. Oh, you and could also better... make the point in 2016. Ortiz was still there. Sure. I mean, I, I it's, it'll be a whole different thing this year. If they're going to carry that baggage onto that, maybe. I don't know. But I think it's more or less. This is what's Cleveland was 2016 in the ALDS mm -hmm. they won, mm -hmm. and Houston was last year. Mm -hmm. Yep. Red Sox haven't won since 2013. 13. Yep. In uh, Game Six at Fenway in October, yeah. so yeah, got to get it done. If you don't get it done, it's going to be another early exit, and fans are not going to be happy. I'll tell you that. Anything else, gentlemen, before we wrap up this jam-packed edition of Face the Fans? Hockey preseason starts Hockey September and basketball 15th. Basketball are coming soon. They are. Probably on the next couple shows, uh, we'll preview a little bit about the Bruins and the Celtics. We're sorry we didn't get a chance to talk about them. But the Patriots and the Red Sox deserved all the attention today, and other teams too in the league. So, uh, we're excited again. This is our first show here for the 12th season of Face the Facts. We will see you again next time for another episode. Hope you have a great week. I'm Nick Face. We'll see you next time. Goodbye.